When I use the word router, the first thing that will probably jump into your mind, admit it, is one of these guys. If you do a lot of CNC work, this guy might pop in your head. If I throw the word plane after router, you might imagine this, a router on a sled used as a planer. But the hand router plane outlives modern routers by at least 200 years. Since I myself am new to these little guys, I picked up the least expensive one that I could find and thought we could review it together. Today, we're going to be looking at this Beaver router plane. If you thought this plane was used to do everything that modern routers are supposed to do, it has a lot of limitations. It obviously can't cut Roman ogee edges or other profiles. While you could create a long trench and a piece of stock similar to a plunge router bit, this isn't why I think every woodworker should own this tool. Instead, think of the router plane as a fixed chisel. This means I can use it to cut dowels to the surface like a chisel, pocket hole plugs, as well as cleaning up valleys and joints. A few years ago, I made this table and I used dowels. And while the two by fours have shrunk, the dowels I used to attach it to the base have not. So I've got a little bit of a, an edge right here. So I'll go ahead and loosen this up and I'm going to place the blade so that it's right on the surface. I'm gonna go a little too high. You can see that's a little too high. I'm gonna lower it. I'll go ahead and lock this back. Now I'll come back with a little Danish oil and cover it up. If you like using pocket holes, the same thing applies. So I'm gonna lower this to the surface and I think it pretty much already is. I'll push down and then drop it a little bit. And at first glance, it looks like this would be very difficult to do, but watch, it's really not that hard at all. And there we go. It cleans up really nicely. It's very smooth. When I use a chisel, not always, but sometimes, I feel like I'm cutting into the other wood. And it, I cut here a little bit, uh, again, right there. With this, it really can't go below the surface. It goes as far down as you set it. If you've ever wanted to add inlay to your work, these things are so much better than using a chisel, as again, the router plane prevents uneven depths. Here I spent about 20 minutes cutting out a quarter inch inlay. Can it be done? Of course. If you're cutting in end grain like I did here, it is going to take a lot longer. This is more practical if you want to cut inlays with hand tools, as you can mirror the upper plane giving a nice parallel bottom, something that's very difficult to do with chisels and gouges. I think one of the most heartbreaking things that can happen when you're adding your inlay is that you've cut a depth too deep, leaving a shallow hole on the surface. So instead, I like to keep it a little thick and scrape the top off so that it's flush. Using a sander means that I'm sanding part of the surface away with any part of the inlay on the surface. Which is why I think that these router planes are an absolute must for anyone that does inlays and again, for anyone who uses dowels or pocket hole plugs. It also works really well if you've started with a router but need to cut right up to the edge, which is where routers with spinning bits are very limited. After routing out most of it, I'll use the router plane to get it the rest of the way, again, scraping the inlay so that it's flush. If I'm going to make a dado, the table saw is my first and second thought because it's nearly impossible to make a mistake with it. I could install my dado blades, but I'd rather just make several cuts. With this, I can easily clean out the channel when I'm done. Normally I use a chisel, but I've dug deep into the wood with a chisel and this really doesn't have the ability to do it once it's locked. I can move this front to back, side to side, and you can see it's absolutely flush to the surface. While datas and trenches are easy to cut out as the sides support the sole of the plane, Rabbits, half laps, and tenons are a different story as you're supporting only one side. First, you'll have to learn a pivot cut, which makes getting parallel cuts easier. For cuts that are an inch wide or less, this motion is all you need to clean things up. If you're wider than that, you'll want to add a piece of stock that's the same thickness pressed against the cut. With this router plane due to the size of the sole, it won't do any more than two inches, but that's not terrible. With this router plane, I think the most disappointing part of this tool are the plastic handles. They feel cheap and generic. I can't imagine the handles ever needing to be replaced. They feel strong enough. I just don't like the way they look and feel, which goes against my idea that you should love every tool you own. So I made three different handle types to replace these plastic ones. What's nice about the way these things are designed, it's, it's easy to add your own handles. Use an M12 by 1.75 pitch, and you can use whatever size you want. I made these handles because I wanted to have a little bit more pull. Um, I'm not sure I love it yet, but I do like 
how smooth it is compared to trying to hold something like this. It feels a little bit more ergonomic. I made these for fine tuning. They get me just a little bit closer and they allow me to move it just a little bit more gently than the, the other two. And the last handles that I made, they really resemble the ones that it came with. But I like these, they just they look and feel a lot better to me. Obviously the most important part of making these handles is to make sure that the bolt does not protrude above the sole here. But it has a much nicer look and feel. To some people this might just be a cosmetic thing, but I end up taking care of my tools a lot better and not losing them when I do personalize them like this. If you're interested in how I made any of these, I've got three links in the description below that will show you how I did this. I've saved my absolute favorite thing I love about this for last. While hand planes and shoulder planes require taking the blades off and then sharpening them to a very specific angle, this isn't picky at all and doesn't need to be broken down to be sharpened. I grabbed this diamond sharpening stone off of Amazon for less than $10. One side is 400 grit, the diamond side, and the other is 1000 grit and is ceramic. I'll make a really quick jig with my table saw, carving out a channel that's the width of the sharpening block. Once I've made my valley, I'll add some dowels on either side of the length of the block to lock it in place. You could use screws here if you want. I like dowels. Now I just need to place the blade on the surface and sweep it across the stone to sharpen and true it up. Every time after this, I can bring it back to this jig to sharpen or hone the blade. I'm not dismantling the router blade to do it. I'm just maybe adding a half of a hair's width before I push it across. And yes, you will want to take your block off and come over here and just hit the corner up a little bit. This will get any kind of burr that's on the surface, but that's it. This is the cheapest router plane that I could find. And while it's listed at about $50, I talked to the company and they sent me a code that makes this a penny less than $28. I'm not making any money on this, so I don't have any incentive to sell this to anyone. But I think if you're just starting out or want to dabble a little in a hand tool, this is a great place to start. In the future, I look forward to grabbing this before I grab a chisel. If you're interested in it, I have a link with the code in the description as well as a diamond sharpening stone, which was the least expensive stone I could find. I like cheap. Before I go, I wanted to let my patrons know that I'm sending out their alls this weekend, and I appreciate every one of them. Thank you. Michelle B, Keith Current, William L. McNally, Jerry Adams, Tommy QR, Zach Finch, Rich Lightfoot, and Tudor the Barbarian. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and ring that bell. And I thank you so much for being a part of my shop. Please leave a comment below. Come find me on Instagram at Make Things with Rob. And remember to keep making things.